it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk guys welcome back thanks for tuning in on this episode we have lights that don't work oh, there we go now we have lights that work we have Chuck Norris in the Manticore the Chuck Accor Monty the Manticore the Manticore I'm not really sure what I'm gonna end up calling it but uh, we have a really interesting thing here you know the thing about Chuck is normally he would just take everything out but he likes to help other people get better so clearly he doesn't always go 15 and 0 on the enemy in the mighty mana core i barely have enough ammo actually to go 15 out and oh did you notice that uh, in order for the mana core to kill every tank you'd have to one shot nearly one shot all of them with only 20 shells <laughs> oh man all right so here we are on sand river over here on the west side and we're going to see how chuck handles this he is going to try to facilitate his team into the win you know, so like I said, Chuck would normally just karate chop the ground and all the other vehicles on the enemy side would explode. A little hi -ya kind of thing, but he likes to let his team help. He likes to train people in teamwork. So here we go. Mantico. I just want to wa want you to watch how this kind of goes. We'll talk about what I'm doing with the old Monty here. Most of the games I played in the Mana Core are pure tier 10 on NA, just based on the way the uh, the server is populated. But this one happens to be top tier, and I've got a nice wide open map. And while there's not a lot of cover to hide in, there's enough space to kind of use the Mana Core's amazing camo. This thing has a 50% camo rating as it is set up with food and the low low noise exhaust and all that good stuff. If I do get spotted, though, unfortunately by that guy, he's a little closer than I would like. No sense rocking back and forth right there, because the Artie, for some reason, Artie just absolutely loves shooting at this tank. I cannot tell you how many times I'll be sitting next to a heavy tank or something more dangerous, and the Artie actually goes right at me. Maybe a little bounce there, that's unfortunate. You've got to watch it with this tank. I also get lit doing that. Drops down to 9% camo when you shoot. It's a huge, huge... Uh, nerf I guess to the camo debuff if you want to call it that when you shoot so get a little shot into him pretty good gun but it really does need to be fully zoomed in for it to have much accuracy it does not snap very well loses quite a bit of dispersion while it's moving and the turret's moving and all that good stuff but once zoomed in it's not bad at all I'm going to come in here these kind of snapshots like this you really have to be careful you only have so many shells, and there we go. We finally get one in on him, and we drop that guy you know, up to 700 damage. So we're working this southwest corner here, trying to keep them from coming up along the edge. Maybe we can get some Artie to help us. I'm going to say this. I hate it when I say this, but you know what? Sometimes you want Artie when you're in a tank like this because it can hit stuff that's hiding out behind berms and things like that. And I only have one. It's the Lorraine. 155. 51 the carry machine all right the legendary Lorraine so we're gonna come over here we find the JPZ he's wandering around see if we can sneak a shot on him no sense taking that shot almost zero ability to pen it even if I sneak down into the lower plate we're just gonna take a peek and it looks like the Skoda has left and we have a big problem up in the north so I'm sitting here thinking Chuck and I are having a conversation I said Chuck why don't you just uh, go up there and destroy him he says no let my team work on it a little bit I don't want to always have to do everything for the team. So Monty the Manicore with his big grin starts headed over that way. You can see that my team is Camp Alama Ding Dong. Mega. Mega Camp Alama Ding Dong. We have three guys taking on five or six. We have a GSOR and then we have the campers sitting on the sniper hill and the grill. I mean, it's just gross. It's just... <laughs> Chuck is just saying, you know, let's just try to work through this and maybe these guys can can learn something from it and be better players but it doesn't appear to be it looks like one two three four five six seven of our tanks are really not going to ever leave cap so we'll flex back over here i was going to push up and start to try to help them but it looks like they're going to get rolled over the e50 is the last one to be there maybe a shot on the t103 he kind of gets tracked this will be a nice kill shot. Nope, it'll be a track. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Long reload on the Manticore. Down he goes. That's a little assist. I'll take that. 
Thought about potentially pushing up and over, but then realized that I'd just be out in the open right there. They've got some tanks with some pretty good depression coming in, so let's just use some of these little bushes here. And we'll wait for the standard B to come in. We've got three tanks up top. We just took out their 430. Maybe we can get a little sneaky shot on that. Looks like it missed, actually. We don't get lit. That's nice. The 40T loses his mind. I really don't know what he was thinking would happen. When you look at the number of campers we have, and maybe he didn't know they were all sitting up there, but he gets absolutely schlammered trying to get in there. We do not get lit because we are making the bush go solid. The standard B backs off, and look at the Lorraine shots going in there. The legendary Lorraine. Just taking his pot shots when he can. I'll push up and see if I can't help the T-54. This thing goes decently hold down, not because its turret's great, but it's got pretty good depression, and it's got a really narrow turret. Not very tall at all, so you don't have to really expose much of the tank to get your shots. So we'll sneak that one in. T-54 is out in that flat. That's why I did not want to go there earlier. It's just a very dangerous place. Scor Standard B gets hit. Gets hit again. I missed that shot. And all of a sudden I'm down to a whole 12 shots. 5 Standard, 5 APCR, and a couple HE. I really need to clear these two out. So Chuck has made a tactical decision to come in here and get rid of these guys. I don't want to get hit by the Basante. But I would like to kill the Standard B and then maybe come around behind the Basante. So we'll come up here and see what we got Basante-wise. There he is. Oh, a little snapshot. He got a shot on us. Legendary Lorraine. Look at that. Shot went in and took out the standard B. We're up to 1,000 assists, 1,200 damage. This thing has really pretty dang good camo, like I said, at 50%. So watch. I'm just going to kind of put the Basante at the edge of the spotting ring, and he just doesn't see me. I'm just able to sneak in here. Low profile. I'll be able to use this little low ground right here, this soil, as you come in on these dunes. Because I'm not a very tall tank, he's just not going to see me. I'm wondering, did he see me? No. Little, there we go. Little uh, artillery goes in there. I'll just sneak right by him here. Nice low, slow profile. Basante has no idea that I just moved in. Come around here and find him. There he is. And take him down. I do want to avoid getting hit by the 4043. I also don't want to just drive up in the north. I think everything's down in the south, but... Let's just kind of come this way for a second, see what's going on, avoid the artillery, see if anybody's kind of up here, and then now that I'm dark, we'll just change direction and head back this way. And now we've got to spot for, look at all the, <laughs> my entire team is sitting. Now I want you to look at what is uh, left in the game right now. Take a look at what's left in the game and where they are. Only me and the Scorpion are forward. we got a bunch of guys camping. Sheridan pushes in. The legendary Lorraine is attempting to support the guys camping up on the hill there. There's three of them. <laughs> I find the Sheridan. I put him on the outside of being able to be spotted when I shoot. Hopefully nobody else is closer. He's right inside draw distance, so we get a nice shot. Unfortunately, like a lot of unlike a lot of other light tanks, I don't get another reload for a very long time. Another shot on the 382. He goes around the other way. <laughs> and now the, the three guys up on the top are being <laughs> swarmed by Oh my gosh. I don't know what the the uh, I, I think I got blocked actually by the STA1 there. That is a big bummer. That would have been another shot on the Sheridan. I'm gonna go ahead and let him die because I am going to go back here and take out their Artie. So I, I really don't want to go face-to-face -face brawl with all those guys. There's a JPZ wandering around. I'm fast enough, and I feel like maybe between the legendary Lorraine and the P44, they'll be able to handle those guys a little bit, or at least weaken them. JPZ hasn't made a uh, appearance. And then I find this guy right here. That's fantastic. He's only got 400 hit points. And I high roll just enough to take him down. Actually, I had HE selected second. Am I going to stick with HE? That's pretty funny. I didn't realize that. Did not realize that during the game. I've got six whole shells left, two HE and four regular AP. The Lorraine is yelling for help. The legendary Lorraine is yelling for help. To be honest, at this point, I sort of left him out to dry. There wasn't a whole lot I was going to be able to do. I didn't feel like I could get in there and go face-to-face -face with the Skoda. 
backed up by a Udez. The Skoda goes in against the legendary Lorraine, and I'm thinking it's curtains for the Lorraine, and then he lives. He kills the Skoda. The Artie is dead, so the Artie can't counter or hit him. And I'm thinking, wow, we just went from looking not great, because there's a more or less full hit point JPZ wandering around, a Skoda, which is the autoloader, and a very stealthy Udez. That was going to be really difficult nut to crack, but the medium is gone. And that takes away a bunch of their maneuverability and spotting. Then the Udez. The Udez, and I'm thinking, okay, legendary Lorraine, time to shine, but I, you're probably gone. And... <laughs> Legendary Lorraine is now at three kills. I've got 2,700, 1,200 assists, and I figure at this point between me and the Scorpion, we should be able to find the JPZ. We'll go ahead and run this ridge. Did he see me? Doesn't look like it. And look at the camo on this thing. This dude does not see me. Look how far inside the, the ring he is. Just nicely zoom in and we'll thump him. Is he going to turn on me? Yep, I'm not going to reload fast enough to get another shot, so we'll just go ahead and dive off of this hill. Don't have to worry about artillery because I got rid of him, and I knew the scorpion was behind that guy. He is in big old trouble, and I'm just expecting the legendary Lorraine to start bombing him. No shots yet that I can see anyway. Just trying to light this guy up. There he goes. Oh, he's decided to go up the hill. He needs to get away from us. Another shot into his side. Is he going to turn on me? I don't know. Nope, he ignores it. The Scorpion's got a nice beat on him, puts another thump, and I should out-reload the Scorpion unless the legendary Lorraine takes him out. And down goes the JPZ. 3,858 damage, 2,212, good number, four kills. Legendary Lorraine. All right, so after this, while well, I was in the middle of this, having a discussion with Chuck about, you know, how this team was doing, I thought there was a point at which we were in big, big trouble, and then that Lorraine just absolutely came through. K-O-R shot from clan fov afterwards i sent him a note said hey man can you send me that replay i'd love to include it in the uh, in the video i'm going to make with the mana core here and he did send it to me so stand by for the legendary lorraine all right here we are from a kor Shot clan FOV and is a Lorraine tier 8 155 51 artillery French artillery. Now, this thing is mobile, it fires quickly, relatively, for artillery, and it doesn't do a whole bunch of damage, but it's pretty accurate. He sent me the note afterwards, sent me the replay, and then said, You know, I just got lucky. And I said, Well, let me take a look at it because you know, there's luck is what you make of it, right? You make your own luck in a lot of cases. And we're going to see KOR do a really nice job with his Lorraine. He's got his Christmas camo rocking right there. And he's going to use the mobility of the Lorraine. I would contend that people could use the mobility of any artillery much more than they typically do. Artillery players quite often go to one spot and sit until they die or win. But if you get a little bit of movement going on, you can really improve your chances. He sees these guys down in the pit. He's already got 338 damage. And he's going to start working on this 705A. This is good stuff for the guys down below there, the E100. If you can stun this guy or shave off a few hit points, it's only 41, but you drop a stun on him, and that's going to limit his ability to fight those guys. There is a, a scrum going on up in the north, but a lot of artillery will shoot into this pit right here because it's pretty easy to hit things down here. They're not going very far. There's not a lot of cover unless they tuck up to the north a bit into the alcoves there. So it's pretty easy to shave off a bunch of hit points on these guys. Take another shot here in just a second. There we go. Thump. This time we drop, uh, through, what, 154? It said 400, but that was somebody else's damage added on top of it. Just notice that that happens. If two hits happen pretty quickly, it'll look like you did a lot more damage than you did, but it's just adding it together. 705. The Patton dies. That was about the time where I was taking shots at him. You'll notice that I'm now down in the southwest, messing around on the hills down there. We're just thumping the 705A. Unfortunately, the E100 is just about out of hit points, and the 705A has done some good work along with their artillery on the poor E100. So I'm down there looking around. Boom, the JPZ takes out the E100. You can see where he is down in the bottom seat. This is where I'm looking at him, but he's backing off, and I don't have any shots. 
And it looks like KOR's maybe going to take a blind No, he's going to let that go. No, he does shoot it. All right, that was interesting. I think what he did there is he right-clicked and held the aim point and then fired. I don't know, not really ever seen that, that uh, technique, but I wondered if it, maybe he was looking at where the 705A was because he backs off. 705A could get close enough potentially where he was sitting to get line of sight from down here up into that spot, and he moves over here to this corner a little further away, so it's going to be harder for that guy to see, and now he's supporting these guys up here. This is where I was looking up there going, man, we got a big problem up there. And KOR starts to do a really good thing, which is shaving off hit points on these guys. So he's shifted from that middle fight. The middle fight is defunct. Uh, at this point, there's not a lot he can do. There's no spotters down there anyway, so he immediately shifts up here to the next fight. I think personally, I'd have rather he was up here the whole time on that fight, but he did slow down the 705A and take some hit points off, so pretty good stuff. Now the 103, this is about where I have shifted back. Manacor is spotted, he gets hit, there I am right there in front of him, looking for the shot on the Manacor. And then we've got KOR is looking like he's going to shift because he realizes that the North is lost and if he sits Watch right out. there, retreat. he's going to get spotted by people Back over here. Alright, so he's yelling retreat. Pretty much just standard French right there, right? <laughs> just kidding French people. Just kidding French people. So he moves over here, right? This is the... This is what I'm talking about with artillery players being mobile. Really is a great job by KOR moving around on this map. Now he's getting stuffed back into a corner and there is a point here where he's going to have not a whole lot of place to go. So he's kind of come up here. He's going to sit on the back side of this. The 40T just died. If you remember we talked about him raging in so we took care of him. Down he goes and now he's going to work on the standard B who is Nicely lit right there. Just misses him. Not a lot of splash on the Lorraine. So the standard B is still sitting there. He's going to keep working on this guy. He does have to check six, but, but the Basante and the Barasque are sort of foolishly pushing in. Spent the whole game camping up there, and now they want to push in against a Skoda JPZ Udez and a 705A. It's, it's hard to comprehend what some people are thinking sometimes my friends it really is there's a nice chunk 273 off the standard B standard B ends up taking down that remember the T-54 was down in the the flat down there I told you that was a dangerous place to be for what he was facing with hold down tanks i.e. IE tanks that have good gun depression so he is working on the standard B you can see now I've pushed forward and I'm starting to look for spots for these guys Standard B is trying to back out. Really, he needs to just turn around and run. But I think it's all over for him. Standard B goes down. It's nicely done there. And I'm basically working together with the Lorraine without knowing it. Just because he's looking in the right spot. This is me flexing around, getting outside of the Basante's view range. The Grill A gets the 705A out. That was a huge kill. Now we got to work on the Basante. Once we take him out, we own the north part of the map, unless the Skoda has moved that way. He hasn't been seen for a while, so I don't really know where he went. That's why I was careful after we hit the Basante. We hit the Basante, now I'm going to come around the corner. In just a moment, still working my way that way. KOR is looking for shots now down in the south. The Barask is looking forward, or moving forward. There's the Sheridan. And I just took out the C-45 Basante, and now KOR in the legendary L Lorraine. This is where he starts to get quite legendary. But just the fact that he is moving, looking to get into good positions, he can tell now that the northwest of the map is clear, right? There's nobody there. I went through that area. We have all the campers sitting back here. Remember I mentioned the three Muppets on the hill? There are three Muppets on that hill, and they're going to be unable to hold it. <laughs> Fantastic. The Sheridan got right up underneath him. Somebody was not looking south. Like, how did he get that far? Maybe he used the folds in the, the dunes or something very well. I, I don't know. Very strange. But here now, KOR is looking for a shot. Trying to potentially help the Sheridan. He's actually looking a little further south. Down goes the GSOR. And they're making a big push to take out the sniper nest. And once they take the sniper nest out, we're in kind of big trouble. Depending on how many of them are left. Nice little shot there. 
That's another 324. He's up to 2300 damage. The Sheridan is pushing into the STA and the Pantera. Remember, this is where myself and the Scorpion are trying to work on the Sheridan. He gets hit a couple times. And pretty quickly here, I'll start going after the artillery. Down goes the Sheridan. This is now me moving in towards to work on the artillery here. This is a really nice shot. Loads up just in time. Hits him right in the side for 736. And down goes the Scorpion. I told you he was legendary. That really should be his kill. That was an amazing assist to take down that Scorpion G. That guy was full hit points. He figured he'd just come up there, finish off the Pantera, and things would be all copacetic. Pantera is still struggling, still fighting. And he dies to the Skoda. But the Skoda takes a big hit from the Scorpion. And it's 3-3. Three to three. Now this is the point where I thought, man, this is going to get tricky. I've just killed the artillery. He might have taken a small chunk off of the Skoda. In fact, I think he did because the Skoda is going to show up with not many hit points at all. He jumps on Cap, which was very interesting. KOR pushes back into the corner in case he keeps coming. I think he's probably thinking right now, all right, they're capping. Maybe I'm going to have to shoot onto the Cap. Scorpion's maybe looking for a way to get a light. I am now moving on in to try to stop this cap, but the Skoda actually went by the cap. The Udez is on the cap, and here comes the Skoda, who clearly got hit by a KOR shot. With 13 hit points, KOR is going to do a little, how's your father? <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. Takes him down. Takes him down. Fantastic. Two kills. 3,049 damage, 1,132 assist. Are we done yet for the legendary Lorraine? We are not. KOR is not done carrying this game. You know, as much as I did and some of the other tanks, uh, he has a fantastic game here in this tank. We'll show you the experience, but we're just going to go ahead and explode the Udez 0 <laughs> Oh, fantastic. All right. <laughs> Little, little burp there. Still the JPZ left, and we've got KOR. I don't think actually KOR gets any more shots. There, He's got over 4,000 damage because there were some blind shots in there. Uh, various blind shots where he got damage. The only the only real end game mistake he makes here, he actually misses that, is he just doesn't quite get in position to get a nice shot. I think he really needed to come up onto the top of this ramp and maybe even come up the hill just a little bit. He could have joined in on the fun on the Scorpion G and myself thumping this guy. He's trying to work the angles right now, but he doesn't quite get there. The JPZ is able to sort of drive up to where some of the rocks up above him. And the uh, the dune right there stops KOR from getting any shots. But, dude, that was fantastic. He ends up with three kills. I'll end up with four. Like I said, it's a 1,300, somewhere around 1,300 experience game in a Tier 8 artillery like the Lorraine. Just really well done. And I think, you know, epic. End game, legendary Lorraine. Without him killing that Udez and killing that Skoda, it's going to make this game much, much harder. And they just YOLO'd into him thinking they were going to get that easy kill. Like, I don't know why the Udez didn't just stop up top there, go into siege mode and peek up over that little ridge and just shoot him at will. But he decided he wanted to come down and attack, and he just got swammered for 534 penned by the, uh, the legendary Lorraine. So thanks to KOR for sending that in. I thought you guys might enjoy that. It is interesting a lot of times to see the view from two different tanks, especially if you have two tanks that did pretty well, but they weren't necessarily working together or in the same place of the map. You can see what he was thinking and looking at, more or less, and then of course I can tell you what I was thinking and looking at. And I will tell you that when I got to this point and I saw that the Lorraine kill the Skoda and then kill the Udez, I'm like, oh man, that guy had to have done some great work right there because that was becoming a very difficult situation for us. And uh, he cleaned that thing up, so that was fantastic, man. Well played on the artillery. Thank you for sending it in. I hope you guys have a good day. That's all I've got. See ya.